On News Now, Australia is today expected to record its biggest drop in GDP since the Great Depression as the economic cost of the coronavirus pandemic becomes clearer. Economists expect the June quarter national accounts to show a drop of up to 6% in GDP, confirming that Australia is officially in its first recession in a generation. Finance Minister Matthias Cormann says the second wave in Victoria has been a serious setback in terms of economic recovery. We do expect a severe contraction in this quarter. We also know what has caused it. I mean, economies around the world have been hit very hard uh, by a global coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you compare our uh, likely situation with what's happening in the UK, where there was a contraction, they experienced a contraction of more than 20 percent just in the uh, June quarter. I mean, across OECD countries, the average is uh, for a contraction of about 10 percent, just below 10 percent over the June quarter. So, I mean, this has um, been a terrible period. The uh, global coronavirus pandemic has had a very um, heavy impact on economies all around the world, including, of course, here in Australia. Towards the end of June and into July, we were certainly on the right path. I mean, in June, 280,000 jobs were restored in the economy. Um, hours worked went up, underemployment went down, uh, the uh, number of people uh, employed went up again. So, and, and in July, um, this, there was a similar, a similar picture. But then, of course, we had the the outbreak in Victoria, which uh, was uh, a serious setback uh, for, for in terms of the economic recovery. We're working as hard as we can to get our economy uh, you know, into the new normal uh, as soon as possible. We do have to get onto that pathway to the strongest possible recovery uh, on the other side as soon as possible. Finance Minister Matthias Cormann there. And Dr Richard Dennis is a Chief Economist with the Australia Institute and he joins us now from Canberra. Richard Dennis, welcome. So what's your expectation with this figure due out in around two hours? Uh, look, uh, there's a lot of speculation that the economy might only shrink by 6% only shrink by 6%. Now, compared to what we were uh, led to believe might be the case earlier in the year, that's that's good. You know, we were, we were at one point afraid of an 8 or 9% contraction. But to put a 6% contract, contraction of the economy into perspective, the entire 1991 recession saw the economy shrink by 1.5%. So if the economy shrinks by 6% today, that means we're in a recession four times deeper four times deeper than the 1991 recession. It's an enormous problem and you don't hear the government talking about snapback anymore. Mm. But not half as bad as some other comparable countries. How does this compare with other advanced countries? We heard Matthias Cormann mentioning that. Uh, look, there's no, there's no doubt that some countries, uh, especially countries that ignored the medical advice, uh, have had far deeper, uh, far deeper economic calamities. It's, it's fascinating to me to hear the government say, you know, maybe we should be opening up, maybe, uh, maybe we should be letting people travel more when the countries that have done that are the same countries they're saying uh, are doing far worse than us when it comes to the economy. So there are no simple solutions here. Uh, there is no magic bullet. Locking down the economy uh, definitely saves lives, but locking down the economy does come at an economic cost. But as Matthias Cormann says, the economic cost in Australia is nowhere near as big as the economic cost experienced in the UK, where, where they've been far, far slower to respond to the medical evidence. And so how has Australia been able to avoid those bigger falls of other countries? Well, the government, to its credit, uh, abandoned its obsession with budget surpluses early in the year. They have pumped a lot of money into the economy. There's no doubt that job seeker and job keeper uh, supplements have, have done an enormous amount to uh, both keep people in jobs and boost consumer spending. Uh, the concern now is that we're, we're just about to be, have it confirmed that the economy is about to shrink by four times as much, three times as much uh, as the 1991 recession. The government's now promising to cut spending, cut spending in the coming quarter. So private consumption is down, private investment is down, exports are down. The one thing that's propped our economy up for the last couple of months has been a big increase in government spending. And now the government's promising to cut that spending in the second half of this year. It's very dangerous if, if that's what they pursue. And so how should Australia be facilitating strong growth out of the back of this? Well, there's only one way to do it, and that is to keep government spending uh, growing. We can't cut government spending. If the government buys less stuff, less people will be employed to make that stuff. If the government pays less in welfare, uh, then people will spend less in shops. 
So again, we know that private spending's down. We know that private investment's down. We know that exports are down. We've shut down our tourism industry. We've shut down our export education industry. The one thing propping the economy up is government spending. If the government keeps spending at a much higher rate, then more jobs will be created. Interest rates are already as low as they can go. So if, if the government cuts spending in the second half of the year, there's no doubt we'll see the economy slow and unemployment begin to rise again. And Matthias Common says the government is continuing to look at lowering the burden of taxation. What do you make of that as a tactic? Look, there's lots of options the government has. It could spend hundreds of billions of dollars giving me a tax cut, but that won't affect how much I work. Or it could spend hundreds of billions of dollars on things like providing free childcare, on things like uh, uh, subsidising uh, all young people to go to university right now. We could be creating jobs in universities and giving young unemployed people some training opportunities. So yes, if the government cuts spending, that'll put money in my pocket, I'll be able to spend that. But if the government spent that money directly creating jobs or giving it to people who have very, very low incomes at the moment, then it would create a lot more jobs per billion dollars spent than giving tax cuts to people who are already in work. And so what will you be looking for in the budget on October the 6th, yeah, in about a month's time? And what's the danger if the government does not continue with its strategy of spending big? Well, the last time we heard the government articulate an economic strategy was, was back in March. And back in March, we were told they needed temporary and targeted measures because the economy was going to snap back. Well, that's six months ago. Now, what they need to do in this budget, I, I think six months too late, is say, here is our medium and long-term plan to create jobs for the millions of people who are now unemployed or underemployed. So nearly 20% of the Australian workforce is defined by the ABS as, as suffering underemployment, either no job or not enough work. So six months into this crisis, the government is yet to actually release its plan. It spent some money with JobKeeper and JobSeeker at the beginning of the crisis. That's good. It delayed the budget. It had a mini budget that had no policy in it. Well, in October, we actually need to hear a plan for how is the government literally going to create a million jobs in the next couple of years. Government spending is the obvious way to do that. But if they're not going to do the obvious thing, they need to be very clear how, how their other thing is going to work. But we don't know what that is at the moment. But what about the government's argument that it just can't keep running up debt? Well, the Reserve Bank completely disagrees. The Reserve Bank governor has made it crystal clear that the Australian government has no funding constraint, should not be at all worried, not at all worried about credit rating agencies, and that the government, this is the Reserve Bank governor, uh, and we've heard similar advice, not as clear lately from Treasury, we've got the Reserve Bank Governor saying that growing the economy is far more important than managing the budget deficit. So, look, the Reserve Bank... The, the government can ignore the Reserve Bank Governor. The, the government can ignore economists like me and pretty much every economist in the world saying only government spending is going to have the short-term benefits we need. They're, they're the elected government. They can ignore all the advice they want. But... Let's be clear, Australia is a low debt country. We have high unemployment. It's, we have very high underemployment. Uh, this pandemic is not going away soon. Government spending is a guaranteed path out of it. If they won't take the guaranteed path out of it, they're going to be, need to be very clear about what path they intend to take. OK, Richard Dennis, thanks so much for talking to us this morning from Canberra. Thank you.